Today marks two years since severe weather tore across parts of our area. An EF4 tornado left behind a trail of destruction in Coweta County. Now, two years later, we are reminded of the physical and emotional damage of these devastating storms. One family is healing with new walls and a new outlook. 11 Alive's Jerry Carnes went to Noonan earlier this year to check on storm recovery there. The scars have almost healed. Ashley Thompson and her children can now relax under a roof that's brand new, surrounded by walls that are new. The family has a new outlook. There was evidence that the tornado had tried to lift our roof. The Thompsons have come a long way since the tornado nearly two years ago that caused so much damage to their home, contractors had to tear it all apart before they could put it back together. There are still a few repairs left to complete. Before the Thompsons could move back home, they had to battle through months of frustration. Getting insurance to work in a timely fashion because you would think you could get a roof quickly and you would think that you could, you know, get your floors replaced quickly when it's obvious they need to be replaced. There was so much that had to be replaced after the March 2021 storm that ravaged the town of Noonan, the strongest tornado to hit the state in a decade, ripped through homes, businesses, and churches. Some homes are still gutted. The repair work is just beginning. For others, there was no hope. The foundations are left as a memory. While Coweta County did receive federal disaster funds, the money went to cleanup and infrastructure repair, not to individual homeowners. That's where groups like the Coweta Community Foundation stepped in, raising more than a million dollars to help struggling families. Whether it's removing trees or building homes, um, or even providing um, child care for those living in hotels. If not for donations and volunteers, the Thompsons' wait to move back home would have been much longer. You don't realize all the PTSD that's going on and grief. Now they're in a familiar place where the emotional wounds can heal. Ashley says any homeowner who suffers trauma like this needs to remember that it will likely come with grief and stress. That is part of recovery as much as anything else, and that can take some time. And we're hearing more stories of resilience and rebuilding. The Coweta County Community Foundation commemorating the day by declaring Saturday, March 25th as a community day of service. And they're using it as a way to honor those who stepped up to help during the aftermath of the tornado. Meanwhile, many families are still rebuilding their homes and their lives. Here's our coverage from a year ago, which marked 365 days since that devastating tornado struck. Big storms across Georgia a year ago. The areas suffering the worst, Coweta County and the city of Noonan. And now, a year later, we are reminded of the physical and emotional damage of these devastating storms. Thank you for joining us. I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb. The damage and destruction, along with the cost of recovery, staggering. But the community rallied together to pick up the pieces, slowly but surely. John Shearick tells us it's a process that for many still continues today. Across Noonan and Coweta County, still a year later, the mark of the EF4 tornado, everyone driven to no less a goal than full recovery. Well, that saying Noonan strong, I think is so true because every day we see more people coming together, volunteering to help with rebuilding. Kristen Webb is executive director of the Coweta Community Foundation, raising money and seeking volunteers to help make residents whole long term. After the tornado, there were more than 16,000 insurance claims from the region, mostly from Coweta County residents, totaling $200 million. Property ravaged, including more than 1,700 homes in Coweta damaged or destroyed. So many residents were underinsured and nearly one third were uninsured. The Coweta Community Foundation has raised more than $2 million so far to help them and others. The city of Noonan has had to spend more than $8 million just to to haul away fallen trees and all the construction and demolition debris. Georgia Senator Raphael Warnock still angry that FEMA will not pay individual disaster assistance to Coweta County and Noonan residents. He's uh, working to come up with her. other federal money. And I think we have to be innovative. We have to be creative in trying to find relief and I'll be pulling on all the levers available to me. Tornado relief takes a really long time and based off of those FEMA calculations, it's a three-year process for our community to truly 
be restored. That's at least three years, and that's if the government and private donors and insurance companies come up with untold millions of dollars more for the people who need the money for a full recovery. In Noonan, John Shearick, 11 Alive News. It was Georgia's strongest tornado in a decade. Here are kind of the stats on the Noonan tornado that hit one year ago. The max winds were up to 170 miles per hour. That's why it's rated EF4. It was on the ground for nearly 39 miles. That is a long track tornado. Anything over 25 miles is considered a long track tornado. And at peak width, this thing was over a mile wide, a large wedge tornado. Now, where it touched down was actually west of Noonan in Heard County. Here's the track it took all the way from west of Franklin in Heard County, strengthening into Coweta County, and then finally lifting near Tyrone in Fayette County. So it was on the ground for a total of 39 miles. And where we ended up seeing the EF3 and the F4 ratings of this storm was in the southwest suburbs of Noonan, heading into the historic district. This road right here, Smoky Road, which turns into LaGrange Street, on the north side of that, so just north of the high school, that's where a lot of the EF4 and EF3 damage was. Now you might be asking, well, what makes an EF3 tornado, an EF4 tornado? The National Weather Service, they look at the houses, the damage, and they see what was the integrity of these houses before the storm? What do they look like now? Here's an example. This was on Fairview Drive. Some of the areas which had EF4 damage, these were newly constructed single family houses. You notice this one taken off its foundation. This other house also taken off its foundation. We had one indirect fatality, but that was it. It is amazing. A tornado at night, EF4 strength, heading into a highly populated area. We didn't have any more deaths. Here's more from Keith Stellman, meteorologist in charge in the National Weather Service in Peachtree City. Fortunately, we were able to get a warning out with plenty of lead time, over 20 minutes. So the wireless emergency alert system had time to emanate through. Everybody had a chance to get it. Um, combined with all the wall-to-wall -wall coverage, it allowed people to tune in and see and figure out whether they were in the path. Now, that said, a mile-wide path with trees down on homes and everything else, there's going to be some luck involved because even if you go to the right spot and a tree falls in your house, you can't, you can't avoid that, right? So um, I, I, there was definitely some luck involved in some of that. We visited this part of Noonan earlier this month, and while some houses have been rebuilt, this one in particular, is still just a slab. Now this was Georgia's first EF4 tornado that we've had in a decade. Since the super outbreak of 2011, there was an EF4 that hit Ringgold in Catoosa County. This is a list of every single EF4 and F4 tornado that the state has had since 1950. We have 10 in total, the last one one year ago. Well, when the tornado headed toward Noonan, a father got the alert on his phone. He yelled roll call and hid with his pregnant fiance and two children in a basement under a mattress. 11 Alive's Hope Ford shows us how a year later they've put their lives back together with determination, three jobs and their own hands. On March 26th, 2021, Michael Phillips got off work, but he couldn't go home. It's just a major setback not to have someone to go to. The day before a tornado ripped through Noonan, Michael hid with his pregnant fiance and children in their basement. The same mattress that's sitting out here on the trash can is what I cover my kids, my fiance, and her mom, and my uncle with. At the time, he wondered, what's next? Now we just gotta figure it out. Now, a year later, there's a lot of new. What'd you say, Fat Daddy? Say, hey. Say hey, everybody. There's the new baby. Say hey, everybody. Then a new side job, ironically named after his experience during the tornado. I was running off a generator, so I considered to be pilot. And that's the name of it, Pilot's Printing. And then there's the new roof over his head. He's renting the place next door from where his family hid. We're hoping to actually buy this place in six months. But with all this new, some things remain the same. Homes with tarps juxtaposed with people happily running by. Roofs still need replacing. Every now and again, we have to put a shingle here, put a shingle there, or, you know, go up there and move this and move that. And families like Michael's do the work with their own two hands. Because the guys that came in from the initial storm, they came in just to clean up and 
make a check and now they gone. While working to replace everything they lost. You know, I'm working two jobs, my old lady working a job, and I'm printing shirts, like. Michael's frustrated with the slow process from FEMA denying the city federal aid. I didn't understand that, because I'm like, this was the worst thing that happened in Newton period. You know, probably won't happen no time soon. And I just don't see how they did not do more. To being denied help, in his own backyard. I probably still got applications right now. It's probably pending. <laughs> Despite it all, Michael and Noonan move forward at whatever pace they can. One day at a time. And even though he knows. There's still a lot left to do. He's grateful he has a home to go to. In Noonan, Hope Ford, 11 Alive News. Well, it has been a year filled with a lot of work. 11 Alive meteorologist Melissa Nord visited Noonan to speak to longtime Mayor Keith Brady to peer closer into the last year of recovery. Coweta County, number one, operator 62, where is your emergency? The whole entire roof of my house has collapsed. When Georgia's strongest tornado in a decade hit, the mayor knew it was bad. I tried to walk into that, to that neighborhood that was right over there and um, on the Grain Street, and it was so bad I couldn't couldn't walk in. This is along the pathway of that large destructive uh, tornado that passed through right around midnight last night. There were trees and live wires down blocking the road to those trapped in the rubble. The sun rose, shining a spotlight on the immense destruction. Heartbreaking. It's, it's, it's the only word that can, can, can describe. But at the same time, um, uplifting. The community came together. Some showed up with chainsaws clearing the roadways littered with trees. The churches had little wagons they were pulling from behind and it just had all kind of food in it, feeding everybody, doing everything they, were, they could do to help. One year later, as we walk the city, it is still obvious there was a tornado here. Still a long way to go. It is a long way to go. We 90 out of 500 homes deemed unlivable after the tornado are still untouched. Many are investor properties, but other Noonan homeowners don't have the means to rebuild. FEMA did their part with uh, public assistance, but FEMA did not do their part, uh, and the government did not do its part with the individual assistance. And that's what has really hurt uh, people who were either uninsured or underinsured. Nonprofit organizations like the Coweta Community Foundation have stepped in with contributions, but there's still a need for more help. Now, some houses are already finished, but some, like this one, remain just a slab yet to be rebuilt. But as these houses get completed over the next months to years, what's going to take a lot longer to rebuild are the trees. The tree canopy, 567 acres were destroyed in the city, but they're working to plant new ones. You know, we were on the air for hours that night covering these storms that were moving in. We had numerous tornado warnings, and often when you hear us issue a tornado warning on the air here at 11 Alive, sometimes we say this is a Doppler radar indicated tornado, meaning that there's a chance there could be some rotation within those storms. But this storm was a little different. With Doppler radar and also dual pole radar, we were able to detect debris signatures, meaning that it was more than just raindrops in the air. Our radar signals were bouncing off of actual debris that was lofted into the air. The National Weather Service has started using tags within their warnings, sometimes saying this damage could be considerable or this damage could be catastrophic. With this storm, they use the words catastrophic damage and a tornado emergency. And that's when we all knew that this was a big one. Well, that twister ripped apart more than a dozen buildings at Noonan High School. But as Joe Ripley reports, the last year has signaled a rebirth and a stronger sense of community after the storm. Something you will never forget. It's devastating to the community, to our students. At the same time, it's, um, it's almost like a rebirth. Attending Noonan High School has run through Allison Rogers' family for generations. On March 25th, 2021, an EF4 tornado ran through this pillar of her community. It was one of those heart-wrenching moments when you realize that we'd never be the same. But again, just praying that everyone was okay. Noonan High Principal Chase Puckett remembers the phone calls that woke him up early that morning. Moments later, he witnessed the destruction himself. Trees uprooted, chunks of brick and metal littering the landscape. All 13 buildings at the school sustained extensive damage. You know, you drive around, 
uh, it still takes me back to a place that I don't like to go to. Um, I'll never forget standing right here that morning. Um, never forget it. But look at how far we've come. Noonan High has since returned to in-person learning, holding 65 different classes in nine mobile units on two separate campuses. Coweta County School Superintendent Evan Horton says local district and state money will fund an $80 million rebuild, which could take two years. In the immediate aftermath of the tornado, Noonan High School and the surrounding community got to work making repairs on Drake Stadium so that graduating seniors could walk, upholding a long-standing tradition. Kids want normal. They want what they're used to. They want the those things and it's 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 good we've been able to provide them with that. It's teachers like Brandavius Mann and Allison Rogers who keep Noonan High trudging through tragedy, keeping tradition alive even when a tornado threatened to take everything away. Every day we're surrounded by, you know, the fences and the supports that remind us that a tornado came through. But we're also reminded of all the memories of generations of memories that were made here. Noonan Strong is a perfect example of what Noonan is the people. In Noonan, Joe Ripley, 11 Alive News. Crews will demolish the old high school buildings this summer, but they'll save keepsake items to create a remembrance wall at the new Noonan High School. Coweta County is still working with FEMA to try to secure federal funding for the largest construction project in the school district's history. Well, several athletic facilities, more specifically the baseball field, was among the destruction at Newton High School. Maria Martin reports the Cougars are back to playing at home this season, but it was a year in the making. We're glad we're, we're able to play here again and just look around and be able to to play on this field and see the community come together and watch the games is awesome. This baseball field. Die wire lines in on Monday. Well, a year ago, if you looked at this field, you would not have thought it was going to be like this. Home of the Noonan Cougars baseball team, just one year ago was struck by an EF4 tornado. We have a beautiful baseball facility, a phenomenal stadium, um, and all these athletic complexes were just left in shambles. The field, just like large portions of Noonan in Coweta County, suffered extensive damage and was unrecognized Half the fence was gone. We didn't, ha we didn't have batting cages. It, it was a punch in the gut. It was a sick feeling um, just because you saw the devastation. So it became, where do we practice? How do we schedule games? Rival schools from around the area volunteered to open their doors while the Noonan High baseball field was being repaired. When I came in on Friday morning, you saw kids on bikes with chainsaws and like a gallon of gas just asking people for help. Realize that even though we are rivals deep down, we still have each other's backs at the end of the day and we're still willing to help each other. It's kind of nice to know that. Noonan native and Braves reliever Will Smith organized an auction to raise money in order to help the baseball team rebuild. I've had those high school kids come up and thank me for having their senior night at Truist or, you know, fixing their baseball field. And they could care less about the World Series. They were just happy to be able to play on their own high school field, which I thought was really cool for me. We are so proud of him. But when he and the Braves reached out and said we want to help uh, is extremely humbling. Um, but is also very inspirational. Like, even though he's big time, he's made it to the major leagues, he's a big name, it's like he still shows how he loves his community and he's willing to give back. And through it all, there is only one word to describe the Cougars. Every senior class chooses a word, and this year's word is resilience. And I think we see it every day in our community, our school, our students, our staff. I think you see the resilience every day from what happened a year ago. A wedding is a new beginning, a celebration of new life together. But in the aftermath of a tornado, many of those I do's were put on hold as a wedding venue worked to rebuild. 11 Alive's Caitlin Ross talks to that venue about what it took to get people back walking down the aisle again. So this is our ceremony lawn. It can seat actually up to 185 guests. Ashley Bursich is proud of her venue, Lillian Gardens, an event space built in the 1800s. Lots of good memories. We get to be a part of that, which is really special. She bought the venue and renovated it five years ago. She says it was perfect. And then the tornado hit. It looked like a bomb had gone off, and so we needed a month just to clean up before I could rebuild. There was a wedding scheduled for the very next weekend, and Ashley says she felt helpless. I feel responsible for these brides' special day. Um, this was there one day, and I felt like I couldn't say sorry. We, you know, I can't help you. And like many business owners in that small community, her home was hit by the tornado as well. It was devastating. She says piece by piece, she rebuilt her home, her venue, and her community. Now it's slowly getting back to, 
you know, what it should be or if not better. So I'm feeling good about the future, but it's taken a year to get to this point. She says it's been hard for all of the businesses that were hit. You try to put it in the back of your mind and say we're moving forward, but I think a lot of people are probably going to relive it. Joy Barnes is a real estate agent in Noonan and supported Ashley as she rebuilt. Together, they decided they would celebrate how far their town has come instead of mourning all it lost. As sad as it was, we need to make it a happy time for people. Reporting in Noonan, Caitlin Ross, 11 Alive News. She hopes the front porch will be finished by this summer so she can finally say her venue has not only recovered, but has come back even stronger. One year later, there is still so much rebuilding to do in Coweta County. And while we couldn't share every story, we hope we shared the stories of resilience, recovery, and how the community has embraced the term Noonan Strong. Thanks so much for joining us.